During those opening promos for Collision, CM Punk actually said he is going to separate the pretenders from the contenders. So I was just clapping because these were all 90s, 85s anyway. And now we're just going full in with it. We also heard from Big Bill and Brian Cage who are going after the AEW Tag Team Championships. I like to call them Jacked Inked. And the reason for that is what happened back in the day. Everybody was giants. So if you actually do want to watch old school wrestling, you should probably watch AEW Clear. Also, hello, my friends. My name is Simon Miller and welcome to Ups and Downs, which is essentially a wrestling review show. And the gimmick is we just wiggle our finger around. People are so mad at me after SummerSlam. It's amazing. I've been doing this seven years and people still don't understand. It's a positive Pete show because it's wrestling and I like wrestling. and I just want to be entertained and I don't know what I'm doing with my hand. Let's up those down. Turns out as we were in FTR Country 2, we were gonna do this championship match straight away. And I'll tell you for free, unless you'd like to give me some money, I thought this rocked. They were also of course taking on Brian and Bill, which is not two dudes from the accounting department. And here is the big question. What do we do with them after this? Because they didn't win here, surprise, surprise, spoiler, spoiler. But they're so damn good, they're so damn entertaining, and as we've already talked about, they're kind of like a throwback. I think we need to come up with a plan and hit go. Cash Wheeler also hugged his mum who was in the crowd, so he's a mega baby face. But then he got in the ring and Cage grabbed him and just went whoop and threw him around. So one of two things would have happened. Mother would have been like, oh no, my boy. Or she would have been like, you're absolute crap. I mean, that's what would happen to me. Let's hope it didn't happen to anybody else. Dax Harwood then tried and he fell too. And FTR were like, look, okay, if we work together, I'm sure we'll be successful, but they weren't. And then they tried the same thing with Big Bill. But these two dudes, they're just too muscular for their own good. I mean, at one point, FTR even tried to hit Billy Boy with a shatter machine. And of course that didn't work. And I was screaming at my TV, man. Even if you tried this at the end of the match, it would be quite the ordeal. But at the start, don't insult him. In fact, Bill was so offended that he grabbed Cash and Dax and just threw them into each other. When he started to jaw jack Mrs. Wheeler, who hasn't we already talked about, was at ringside. You know what she did? She just hit this guy. And I was like, man, she should get in the ring. She'd kick everybody's ass. Cass was worried for his bro, so he did tag in. And he tried for the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment, the surprise roll-up. But that was never going to work. And I understand that I'm running this thought into the ground. But it's my show. I'll do whatever I want. That was not going to work because they're just too big. Man, do I love it. The best part of all of this, though, is that Wheeler eventually used his knowledge of the Arkham series, the Batman games, because when Billy Boy came running in, he just got out the way. And I tell you time and time again, that's how every single boss fight in those games go. And there's a reason for it. It works. He also got the hot tag to Dax. And Matt, what had this guy done in the interim? He must have taken some power ups because he was larrying everybody and knocking them to the outside. So I was like, well, where was that five minutes ago? They also hit their big Steiner-like bulldog for a near fall. This is when Brian and Bill was like, oh, let's hit our finishers. But of course that didn't work. That's when you started to realize, well, obviously we're not going to change the championships here. And nor should we. That would have been silly Billy. Brian then went for the F5, but FTR got the ultimate revenge because they pushed these two guys into each other when they did hit the shatter machine. One, two, three, and they are still your tag team champions. But actually, as good as this was, the best bit was the fallout because they got a microphone and they were like, Wembley, London, that's coming up soon. I think we need a big match. So young bucks, we are calling you out. And of course, that's happening in my backyard. <laughs> So I started doing the dance of joy. And of course, Matt and Nick Jackson will accept that. So you're telling me I get to go like 10 minutes down the road. I mean, it's much further than that, but hyperbole is fun. And see FTR versus the Young Bucks round three. I'm sorry, given how many people are going to be there, this could be one of the best tag team matches ever. I'm very, very excited. This was good. Up. Then had a quick video reminding us that our main event is CM Punk versus Ricky Starks for the World Championship, the real World Championship. When Juice Robinson was here, and he had that damn cardboard cut out of Jay White again. And this really does make me laugh, and I was like, huh, well I wonder where Jay is when White just walked into the frame. And I was like, Juice, now this is really, really weird. He promised he was going to beat Metalik because they are having a match later, when the Gun Club also walked in. So I was like, wait a minute, so you guys decided that Juice Robinson was going to have an interview, 
you were just going to hang just off camera, but then slowly walk in and pretend, oh, we just made this up on the fly. No, you didn't. You had some really strange plan. They also then insulted Tony Schiavone and they were like, oh, man, Bullet Club Gold, we're going to have all the fun. That's like, what you should be doing. F-U-N, the magic forgotten word in professional wrestling. When the TBS title was on the line. All right. Now, I will say we need a proper feud for Chris Statlander because he's just so over right now, although we did actually tease that. And here she was taking on Mercedes Martinez. Now, this worked because, of course, Chris is a super baby face. And when you look at Martinez, you're like, <laughs> my gosh, I think she's going to murder me. They both ran at each other to start as well, because why the hell not? And after Chris Statlander tried to get a few things in there, Mercedes were like, nope. And she just hit every single suplex you've ever seen in your life. I mean, why not? Martinez then transitions to just elbows to the skull. I'm like, man, she must think that the Blackpool Combat Club are watching her and this is an audition because those guys love that. For you see, they think there's money in people's brains and they want it. She also hit this massive tree slam. So here we go. And Statlander was like, oh no, I'm being beaten up. I don't want to lose my championship. So she took her knee and she webbed it right into Martinez's skull. I thought about it for a while and I was like, that's probably what all wrestlers should do. It would kill you. She also hit a backbreaker, so she was trying to break some backs, when all of a sudden Mercedes was dishing out more suplexes, which is when Chris went for the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment. <laughs> Surprise roll up. Very sadly, it didn't work. And actually what happened after that is Mercedes reversed a face buster into a face buster. I was like, man, somebody better call Nick Cage and John Travolta. I think Statlander then realized she was going to lose her championship. So when Martinez came in with another big knee, she thought, well, you know, once failed, I'll try, try again. And she hit the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment. And this time, Kablamo got the three. Now I do kind of feel like she could have just hit her big move and got the victory, but who cares about that? And afterwards, Mercedes started to beat her up. Diamante arrived, and man, what a magic show she went through, because she was like, oh man, I'm gonna help you, Chris Statlander. But that was a lie, and she whooped her ass too. This is when Willow Nightingale, for the second time, came out to help Statlander. So you can see what we're doing here. We do have some major plays. So let's make sure we insert some storylines and some angles, because that will elevate the title. And again, Chris Statlander is just so popular. You want to capitalize on that. But I thought this was a really solid match. Up, also bring it down. Surprise roll-up counter goes up by one. When Tony Schiavone was with Tony Storm, and man, this new character rocks. Because she was acting like some kind of mega celebrity or like actress that was having a massive meltdown and has also lost all her confidence because again, she's not the world champion anymore. Man, she can't handle it. She also doesn't know if she is good enough anymore. How will she ever get back to the top? And she feels like everybody's laughing at her. And this to me had like Britt Baker vibes when Britt was on the Jericho boat and she was like, oh man, Tony Schiavone, you're just a Starbucks barista. You can feel that if we treat it right, this may fly. And in fact, I thought it was so well done and also so out of nowhere. It was only the first attempt. I am giving it an up. Trust me, there's something to it. And then Samoa Joe killed Serpentico. If it was Serpentico, you're never really sure. We'll also never be told either because this was so damn fast. And he basically ran at Samoa Joe, who murked him, <laughs> locked in the Kakina clutch. And as Nigel McGuinness told us, that was the fastest match in collision history. I mean, it barely went seven seconds. This was mostly done to establish his dominance, though, because then he, too, got on a microphone. It was all like, oh, my gosh, London, Wembley Stadium. I need a match. And that CM Punk is walking around saying, I'm the best in the world. But when he beat me, he did it with the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment. And I think that's disgusting. So I want to go again. Yes. He also told Punk that he better answer this challenge next week. And man, we have got to do this, especially because you have options here. Even if you just do Samoa Joe versus CM Punk, if I get to see that live, once again, I'm going to be wiggling my hips. But you could throw Ricky Starks in there and you could throw Jay White in there too. I mean, who wouldn't want that four way? There's always one guy. I don't want to see it. Oh, yeah. Well, go to the toilet or something. Don't know what that means. Point is, I think it's a great idea. Give me that up. We then had another video showing us everything that had happened between Andrade and Buddy Matthews last week. And I think Andrade said, if you take something from me, I will pursue you and get it back. So if you're a doctor and a nurse and Mr. Tranquilo comes in and wants his blood taken, well, I would refuse it and show him the door. Tony Schiavone was then back after this. Dude is working his ass off. Because he was sitting down with the acclaimed. And man, these two were so damn sad. 
because Billy Gunn has decided to retire. They tried to talk him out of it, but he ain't doing it. This is all down to the fact that Daddy Ass feels like he cost Max Caster and Anthony Bowens the tag team titles and the trios titles. And given that he's lost a step and given that he is getting old, it's time to say goodbye. Now, while they don't agree, the acclaim does respect this, and they were super duper emotional here, and even said every single match that we now have, we're gonna carry around your boots, Billy. <laughs> okay, it's kind of a nice gesture, but you also come across a little bit like psychopaths. They are gonna be back in action next week too, and look, once again, let's talk about All In. We have to find them a mega match on that show, because if you have 80,000 people for this pairing who are mega over, that could be an absolute moment. So I like all of this. Clearly we're teasing something. And I would guess that Billy Gunn comes back. But do I know for sure? Of course not. I'm giving it up. Because everybody loves the acclaimed. We then had some trios madness next. It was the House of Black taking on Darius Martin, Axel Andretti and Lee Johnson. Like the Ring of Honor crew. I also think this was Johnson's first match back from injury. And that dude is just so good. Like when he got his tag and it was his time to shine, he was like the flipping sun. The House of Black are something else entirely right now though, because they've just got such a good vibe to them. And the house rules were in effect. So the good guys had decided, well, we don't think Julia Hart should be at ringside. Which was a smart decision. She's basically a spooky wookie witch. We also started with Darius Martin and Brody King going at it. And I'll tell you, this Brody man, one day he is absolutely going to be pushed to the moon as well. Because he killed this guy and essentially did that for the entirety of the match. He also did do his favorite move in all of wrestling though, which was taking action and hurling him into Barry Barricade. And I tell you, when it comes to justice for Barry, if we were going to find public enemy number one, it would be Brody King. He can't help himself. To the point, we bring it down. The Justice for Barry counter, it's at 94. 94! Some people die at 94. And when it gets to 100, you know the deal. We shall do the funeral. And Brody, <laughs> you ain't invited. You're basically going to be his killer. But he soon tagged in and he was going at it with action, which was the appropriate word. <laughs> they were just going so nuts. Eventually, they crashed into Alan the announce table. And when Johnson got in there, he took out Matthews and Malachi Black with a DDT. <laughs> I didn't see it coming. When the tides turned as well, Andre tried to balance this out by just doing a 450 onto everybody. And that's the equivalent of finding an individual and saying, where's the bathroom? And they gave you a hug. It's like, man, I don't think we needed to escalate this. The tag klaxon then went off her and Martin and Andre decided to use super kicks as their weapon. But very sadly, they forgot about Brody King. And at one point, Darius kind of did a big splash onto his back. He just popped up and went, raw. He was like a Loch Ness monster. Malachi Black and Buddy Matthews also used their knees as Brody came in with this massive lariat to get the three and get the House of Black. I'm just giving them a round of applause. I think they are totally faboo. I'm giving them it up. I could be wrong at the end of this too, but I swear I heard it. Ian Riccoboni, the commentator, just went, oh yeah, next week we shall be doing the Black House versus CM Punk and FTR. I'm like, well, I understand why we would do that, but do my loins want it? <laughs> you bet your ass. So now I'm absolutely excited. We also had a quick skit with QTV because QT Martial and Harley Cameron found Powerhouse Hubs. And they were like, oh, hi, we're really sorry we screwed you over, but look, we got you this lovely gold chain was pretty nice. They also said they're going to sort him out a match for All Out, but for some reason William wasn't into this. It's probably going to be Hobbs versus QT and the powerhouse will smash him, but he did take the chain and he walked off. I was like, yeah, I would have done that too. Again, it was lovely. When Christian Cage arrived and <laughs> he won the night. Just like that. Because he was here with Luchasaurus and he was super mad that people think Darby Allen and Nick Wayne should be role models. <laughs> When he introduced his own child, literally, his daughter was here. He was doing this to prove that he's a much better role model. When his kid tried to hold the TNT title, Cage was like, well, no, you don't get to hold it. You didn't win the thing. And after he shooed her away and told her to go find her mother, he went, hey, security, get rid of her. She doesn't have the right credentials. Honestly, I was howling. I was laughing. This was excellent. Of course, he still thinks he is the TNT champion as the dinosaur just stands there. And one day he's going to go hop and eat Christian's head. And he's only going to have one person to blame. I love this act. I love how ridiculous Christian is becoming. This was genuinely absolutely fantastic giving it up. Which brought us to Jay White and he smashed Metal League. The guns were on commentary too, so this was just super good, happy, fun times. And yeah, Jay was all over this guy to begin with and he spiked him with a DDT. I love Jay White. One day he shall find himself in the main event. 
That's just what he does. Eventually, he did apply the Boston crab, and I was like, that's funny, he's not even from Boston. But all of a sudden, Metalik did get his shine in, and he hit this crazy hurricanrana and this moonsault. But at one point, it looked like White's head went right into the ring canvas. I got a little bit scared. This was mostly a showcase for White, though, so eventually he smashed him with the Blade Runner, and he got the one, two, three. And again, I think this was just to underline the fact that he is damn good, and he shall be doing something at Wembley. I would put him in that four-way, but at the moment we don't know, but we do know is he's getting up. This side, Pimping Dynamite, and reminded you it's going to be Shida versus Anna Jay on this week's episode. We had a video here, which was quite good. I hope that Shida does get to that pay-per-view with the title when it was time for our main event. Because it was Starks versus Punk for the real controller, sorry, the real world's championship, and we had Ricky Steamboat as the special guest enforcer. So once again, this was just so damn easy to plug into, and we had weeks worth of story. Damn right. Punk was out the gates first, and he floored Starks and was able to mimic his pose. Seeing the deal, Ricky got back to his feet, he hit a couple of arm drags, and then he did his pose properly, so it was a pose off. He went really quickly. You could hear Penta, and he wasn't happy at all. The reaction to this match as well were absolutely excellent. And this is why it doesn't matter whether CM Punk is a face or CM Punk is a heel. He just generates so much noise, and because of that, this felt like a big deal. They also went for their finishes really early on, because I guess they'd stored them before they hit start. When Rick hit Punk so hard, they fell to the outside. This soon turned to chops and strikes, and we got this noise for a while. When Punk just ran at Ricky Starks, and because they collided, <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't have done it, so damn hard, they fell over Barry Barricade. At least it wasn't into him. It wound Punk up so much, he started to hammer on Starks, which is when Ricky the Dragon Steamboat was like, no, CM, you're taking it so far. So he did start to, I don't know, instigate his authority. And Ricky used that opening to slap Punk once more when he looked at the dragon. I was like, man, you can't look at someone in wrestling. That's super duper serious 9000. We then, of course, started to tease everything we had done over the last few weeks because Starks hit the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment, the surprise roll up, and he put his feet on the ropes. This is when Steamboat was like, nope, you're not doing that. So he was doing his job. A superplex followed this. They smashed into each other once again when Starks hit this massive powerbomb. And I tell you, at this juncture, I was like, well, look, I think CM Punk is going to win. But is he? Is he? I didn't know. Starks almost then got GTS, but he responded by grabbing Punk and throwing him into Rita the ring post. But when he went for the spear, CM dodged that and he booted Rick right in the head for another good near fall. And this is when things started getting really interesting because they went for their finishes again and they accidentally knocked out the ref. Whoops. Starks then tried to use this to his advantage because he once again hit the surprise roll up and this time he was just using the ropes. But there was no referee, so this time Ricky Steamboat was like, how? Why are you wasting my time? And he physically pushed Rick away from that position and said, would you stop it? It's just so annoying. It meant there was shenanigans and of course Punk used this to hit the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment. And because Ricky Starks wasn't ready, Steamboat got in there, he counted the three, which meant Punk retained his title. And I tell you why I'm all over this. They are actually doing a feud over the most devastating move in your sports entertainment. I am so damn happy. This was not the same for Ricky Starks, who was super mad, to the point after Punk had left, he beat up Ricky Steamboat. And he even had like this leather strap and he was whipping him with it. And I was like, man, what the flub is you doing? We sold this big two because Punk had to go back to save him and a doctor was out there going, Ricky, Ricky, are you okay? So does this mean that Ricky Steamboat is coming back? And he's going to tie into this in another way? I mean, I can't figure it out, but am I going to tune into next week? Yes. Yes, I am. Because something is definitely brewing here, especially because you have Samoa Joe on the horizon too. So again, as we've said, since Collision debuted, it just tells such easy but interesting stories. That's all I need for wrestling. Uh, but also brought us to the end of AEW Collision, and obviously it is going to get an up, because I tell you, they have set out their stall, and they rarely vary from it. Kind of hard to criticize. Also, as we talked about at the start, it's nice to be a positive Pete. There are so many negative Nancys in wrestling. More power to them. I'm not one. Up. Now, please do leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about last night's AEW collision, or Saturday night's, I should say. And also, look at the screen. It's ups and downs for money in the bank. No, it's not. It's ups and downs for summer. Just click it, right? It's summer slam ups and downs. You'll have a good time. Before you like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Whatculture.com, social media, you know the deal. Just come and interact. YouTube loves it, and then by proxy, so do we, because that's our job. You have a great old day. Thanks for seeing you. Man, this is... Thanks for... Goodbye.